What's going on, everybody? Hello, everyone. Welcome back to our Strengthening Love and Sex podcast. We are excited about today. We hope that you guys have been rested and loving on each other and making your love what it was meant to be, what God meant it to be. He wants you to have the best sex life in your relationship uh, that is possible. I believe that God ordained sex. Oh, yes, definitely. I believe he created as a gift Mm -hmm. for a husband and wife to enjoy. Not just for procreation. Not just for procreation, but But for recreation. recreation. (laughs) (laughs) So we want to talk about that today with you because we recognize we've been studying, Ron and I have been studying to get our certification as sexologists and sex doulas. And um, there's a book that our instructor required us to read called Come As You Are. Mm -hmm. And it's by Dr. Emily Nagowski, who talks about the fact that you must take into consideration context when you're talking about great sex. I never thought about context Mm -hmm. relating to sex. But here's an example. Okay. So there's this 20 year old woman. Okay. And she's laying next to her lover in the bed. Okay. He's got some Luther playing, little Luther. <laughs> little Luther. He's got the flowers that come from the door to the bed. Petals all over the bed. She lays down beside him. He rubs on her. She begins to take that as a signal. Oh, this is going to be great. She gets excited. She gets aroused. Mm-hmm. Um, she begins kissing her, her mate. And the next thing you know, they are making passionate love. Great sex, great context. Now, you take that same woman at around her early 30s. Okay. She's had two kids. Two children. She's married to this guy, right? Okay. And um, he's thinking he's going to do the same thing again. He's going to put some flowers down. He's got the big Luther playing this time. <laughs> Things have changed. <laughs> and he's playing the music, and he's rubbing on her. She has just put two kids down to bed. She's been at work all day. She's stressed out. And when he goes in to lean in for the kiss, she says, baby, not tonight. And they both roll over and they are thinking the same thing, but not saying it. What happened to mm-hmm. our sex life? So what happened? What, what, what changed in this scenario? What a lot has changed. One, little Luther is no longer little Luther. He's big (laughs) Luther. So there's been changes there as well. But the context actually has changed. Mm. You know, we have to take into consideration that the role that stress plays in a relationship it sometimes slams the brakes on that erotic drive. You know, the key to managing stress is that it doesn't have to mess with your sex life, but it's more than just simply relaxing or cooling down. It's about really talking about what's going on with 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 the couple, you know, with right. them at that time. You know, not only stress, mm-hmm. but also she has changed. She's changed and he's changed. Tell how she's changed from her 20s to the 30s. What, what context has changed? One, her sexual drive has changed in part because she's delivered two children and she's worked all day. Now she has put two children to bed. She's exhausted from work. She's exhausted from the children. And she wants to be intimate with her husband. It's just that at that particular time, exhaustion has taken over and she physically cannot. And her body has changed. Yes. What does what does that body change after birthing babies? Uh, How does that affect the woman's sex drive? Well, some of it because on the outside, her body has physically changed, not only on the inside. She may have a couple extra pounds, which she may be stressed about, uh, or, you know, she still may be nursing and her breasts are super tender. And we don't always want to be feeding the baby and the big baby, you know, so meaning that you know, she's tired. Her body is taking on more stress than she did when she was in her 20s. In her 20s, the energy was different. She could get up and go or she could be aroused by a simple touch. Now it takes a little more intentionality. You mentioned stress. Stress is a is a big part of that oh, for yeah. the man and the woman mm-hmm. because I'm sure he's working too. Right. He's holding down a job right. and the funny thing is, is that sometimes when I'm stressed, 
I feel like sex is the best relief for me. But for a woman, that adds to her stress. It does because there we have different, now there are some women who do relax via stress, but for a majority, that is not how we recharge. Some recharge by taking additional naps, you know, changing their diet, doing some exercise, having some me time. But the mm -hmm. communication to her husband to let him know at the time, baby, it's not you. It's not that I'm neglecting you. There's something going on right now at this moment. Well, I just need to recharge. You know, Dr. Nagalski in her book, Come As You Are, he talks about the stress response cycle. Okay. And how it's not enough to say, well, just relax, baby. Mm -hmm. You know, it's going to be all right. You have to go through the complete stress response cycle. So there's an alarm, there's resistance, and there's exhaustion. So the alarm, for example, if a lion came up on you in the jungle, your response would be, oh my God, mm. it's a lion. You're either going to run, or if you got a weapon, you might stop and fight. Hopefully you survive that incident. But survival is not the same thing as relaxation. Because your immune system, your body, your physiological system responds to that alarm, and your heart rate goes up, cortisol floods through your right. system, adrenaline floods through your system, and then when you're no longer in a threat, now you got to come back down from what it was you were alarmed about. You survived, you mm -hmm. resisted it, but now you're exhausted. And to fully complete that stress cycle, you got to allow yourself time to recover, to say, to move from I'm at risk to I'm at safe. Worry, anxiety, fear, and terror are stress. There's a lion, run. Mm. Now watch this, we're not gonna run into lions. Right. But we'll run into lion people. <laughs> we'll run into hostile work environments. Right. We, we have uh, deadlines that we didn't meet or bills that need to be paid or kids who are acting up or some kind of diagnosis we get at the doctor. These are all stressors that we must recover from. Stressful sex feels different than joyful sex. Can you talk about that? Of course. When you have stressful sex, it's just like it's another to-do item. Uh, it's something on the list that I need to check and get this done. This is something that my spouse needs at the time, not something that I necessarily need. Wow. But joyful sex is both mutually um, gratifying to both people and both want it at the same time. Mm. And there are some times when you can act your way into a feeling per se where that stressful sex becomes joyful stress, but when you're really stressed out, you had mentioned about the lion. Let's just make it practical. There are women who are going through menopause. There have been a, a season in my life where I felt like that I was during menopause having the hot flashes where a dog was chasing me in the middle of the night and my adrenaline is pumping, I'm sweating, my heart, has in, heart uh, rate has increased and afterwards, I'm exhausted. And then I lean over and say, baby, can I make love to you? And you're like, Negro, please. Those are not my words <laughs> <laughs> in my mind, but those are not my words. But my words were like, babe, you know, I've, I've just been running from a dog. And we've had this conversation so many times that when I use that analogy, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't mean that I don't want to connect with you physically, but at that particular time, I'm exhausted. Let's talk about that. Let's 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 get real for a minute. Let's okay. get out of the, out of out of theory. And I just want to give y'all a peep into our life real quick. So for my wife's birthday, I got her a puppy. I I, I said, you know what? This is gonna bring some joy in my wife's life. Um, I know that she lost her mom in December. We lost our dog at the. 15 years? Yes, we had Coco 15 for 15 years. She years. died two years ago. Mm -hmm. I said, it's time. It's time to bring some joy back into our family. And so we got this puppy, and she was the, the runt of the litter, smaller than the other puppies. And it's okay, because we loved her, right? Mm -hmm. And then her glucose levels dropped, and we're like, oh, my God. We almost lost her, took her back to the breeder. We finally got her back a week later. And my wife has been nursing her back to health, lovingly nursed her. She got the little syringe. She's given her her, her nutri care. She's given her dog food and a syringe. She's given her Pepto-Bismol, just like a new baby. And so 
even last night, I'm like, baby, I miss you. It's been two days since we've been since we've connected. And my wife, she looks weary right now. <laughs> if you see it, she looks, y'all looking at her right now, she's like, that poor baby looks so tired because she's been on a three hour shift taking care of this puppy. And this this puppy, me, I'm like, baby, it's been two days. And she's like, let me put the dog down. And and I'll be in there in a little while. She went and put on her sexy lingerie. And um it was we had a, a wonderful time but it was, I could tell she was tired. Mm. And so the reality is this, is that the stress of raising a new puppy mm -hmm. is a very real thing. Right. We both were stressed out. We both cried when we thought we were gonna lose mm -hmm. her. We survived it, she got better, then she took a little dip, and she got. we got over that, and now we're trying to get back to a place of equilibrium, but chances are, this whole week, we're gonna still be going through this cycle. And we're not going to have joyful sex <laughs> for a little while <laughs> until we get this baby settled. And for some of y'all that are listening, you're going through some things right oh. now that have interrupted your daily life. You've gone through that stress response cycle. Uh -huh. How do you completely go through it? Baby, can you give them some practical things on how to re recalibrate themselves after they've gone through a stressful event? Well, one, you have to get back into physical activity. Like you have to get outside, get some vitamin D, get some, take a walk, uh, go to the gym. Um, you need to possibly even do some physical <laughs> uh, screaming or have a good cry because that release ha actually helps to bring about awareness to yourself and you're releasing that stress and then you know after a good cry you know you have a and then you're like okay we, we about that. that yeah we did that a week ago right yeah. when we thought we was going to lose our puppy mm -hmm. and we talked to the vet we hung up the phone and we held each other and literally cried and there was something about that cry that was cathartic right we didn't wallow in pity mm -hmm. or grief but we had to get it out like this is too much and once we got through crying, we dried our eyes, we hugged each other, we started laughing, we went for a walk uh, to help bring us back to a place of equilibrium. Right. Also, progressive muscle relaxation or, or the sensory motor meditation, a massage is good. Mm -hmm. We get weekly massages, well, not weekly, but bi-weekly, um, and it helps so much to release that tension because right. you carry a lot of stress mm -hmm. in your body. Self-care. How about you? I know sometimes when you get stressed out, you like going to get your nails on and oh going my to gosh. the beauty shop. Yes, What's that I, do for you? I'm out of here. To let someone else do for me, <laughs> although I can do it myself, it's just that someone else taking care of me for just a short amount of time, it gives me energy. Yeah. So context. It, in order for us to have great sex, we have to recognize what the stresses are. Right. And we have to go completely through the stress response cycle. Mm -hmm. We're going to have some stimuli that stresses us out. We're going to have to fight against that stressor. And then we're going to have to figure out a way to get back to relaxation. There are three things that I think are necessary for great context. What context, uh, what, what experiences do we need in place to have great sex? I'm glad you asked the question. First of all, low stress. Oh my gosh, that's a big one. As much as it depends upon you, mm -hmm. men, listen to me good. If you're going, if you want your wife to be at her best, you gotta reduce her stress. <laughs> and women, I would say the same thing for, for, for women. You gotta help create a safe space. Your home, Lord have mercy. Your home has mm -hmm. to be a stress-free place as much as possible. We go through so much stress on our work, in school. There's got to be a place, a safe place, uh -huh. where you can come and not have any stress. I said this before in another podcast. There's a proverb that says, I'd rather, it's better to have a dry piece of bread on a roof than to share a house with a nagging wife. And I'm sure the wife feels the same way. It's better to be somewhere by myself than to be in a house with a man that's tearing me down. Uh -huh. So we got to make sure as much as it depends upon us to create a stress-free environment. And I've got to pitch in and help it with this new puppy. Mm -hmm. So when I see Rhonda giving medicine, she told, she showed me yesterday, she's like, man, look here, 
<laughs> come here, come here, boy. This is how I'm feeding this dog. You're gonna have to do this when I go away this weekend to spend some time with uh, our our, son, our sons. We got to make it. She's going to visit Jaden on campus, and so I gotta. You're gonna have to handle this while I'm gone. I said, okay, teach me, <laughs> because I have to share in the load, and that helps reduce her stress. Right. The second thing that's necessary for great sex is what, babe? Is high affection. Okay, talk about it. Although it's great in reducing stress, sometimes as women, well, I can speak for myself, more affection adds to my stress sometimes. When I'm doing a whole bunch and you're just coming up and like, let me kiss you, let me hug you, and I'm milling around doing something, I have to catch Look myself. My Why? I'm telling you. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of men want, men, I'm, I'm, I'm not the only one who wants to know this right now. Let me give you a perfect example. When my wife is getting dressed and she's standing in the mirror naked, I get excited. And I want to go kiss her on the face, kiss her on the breast, you know, hug her. And she's like, <sighs> and I'm like, what? Just... Not always, but it's like you do it intentionally <laughs> when I'm rushing because he's like, what time are you going to be ready? You know, he's and counting me down and out. that stresses me out. Okay. Or you come in the bathroom and you sit on the side of the tub and I'm like, if you don't get his out of here while I'm getting dressed. So, is, so let that me ask you, adds. Let me ask you a question. Is <laughs> So when I come in and I'm kissing on you while you get dressed, is that my punishment because I want to be on time? Because you feel stressed out that I want, because typically I'm the one that's on time and you're late. Is that my punishment that I can't kiss on you because I'm a stickler for time? No, it's not your punishment, but it is a thorn because you're coming in and I am trying my best to make sure I adhere to those time parameters and you're doing something that's taking me out of my groove. Loving and, on you, and I, kissing on you. At that time, it's not always, <laughs> but you know what you're doing. You know what you're doing. I just wanna sneak in a quick kiss. And you I'm know gonna... you know what you're doing. It's... So you just need to contain yourself <laughs> for five minutes and go the hell in another room somewhere. <laughs> Let me get dressed. That's all I'm saying. So high affection for you is what, hon? High affection. You, when I want you to rub my feet, uh, you know, when I'm not rushing, gotcha. when there are not time parameters, especially when those time parameters, and I know you're already dressed because I think you've got something going on in that closet where you can walk in and you automatically come back out dressed. And I'm like, I just was in there. What, what the, uh? <laughs> so for me, May not be for other women, but for me, doing those particular times, it adds to my stress. When I'm not rushing, it's just a casual, we get, I, it's enough time. I don't mind it. I welcome it. I may even come in, you know, and dance with you and we play a little bit. So it's just that being mm -hmm. full transparent. And let me ask you a you. question. What? So when I'm studying for a sermon. It's intentional. And I'm on my It's computer. intentional. No, 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 let me finish. Oh, yeah, and, and, I'm, and I'm working on my sermon. I'm doing some work and you come in and you say, oh, you look so sexy. Or you come in dancing naked in front of me. Is that the, <laughs> is that the same thing as, as, as coming in the bathroom when you naked? I am telling you it's intentional. <laughs> Did you not, before you even finish this whole little litany, I told you it's intentional because I know, uh, well, some good times you have stopped, but eight times out of 10, you're going to continue doing what you're doing. That's just a little tease for later on. And we just leave it at that. And, you know, I come in, mess with you, but it's intentional. Y'all help me. Help me, help it make sense. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> so it's it two, doesn't. So we said two things that are, <laughs> two things that are necessary for setting a great context for great sex is uh, low stress, mm -hmm. uh, high affection, and here's the third one: explicitly erotic. Okay. So listen, if those other two are not met, you can she can have on lingerie. He can smell good. He can put flowers down, he can run your bath water, but if she's stressed out, uh, or if he's stressed out, had a bad day, mm -hmm. I don't care how romantic the environment is, it's not going to work. You're not gonna have great sex because you need those other two to be in place first. And then the third one is when you're explicitly erotic, 
and you set the atmosphere, you got the music playing, you got the lingerie, you got the bubble bath, you got the romantic dinner, you got a great combination then right. for great sex because the context is right. It's right. So The moon and the stars are aligned. That's what you mean when you say that? Yes. My wife is like, I'm like, can we do such and such tonight? And she's like, if the moon and the stars are in alignment. I'm like, what does that mean? It means for her, she's not stressed out. Right. Uh, I've been affectionate. Mm -hmm. I've been consistent. She feels safe. Right. Provided for. Uh, and everything is in alignment. And we want to let you know that it's so important that you have the context right. Right. And our context is through our different stages in life will continue to change. Yes, and there are so many things that can be context or well, that will not lead to great sex. We're getting colder, uh, the seasons are changing, and we may get a cold. Women taking too many antihistamines will dry you out, and that will make your sex painful. That's a context. Mm -hmm. So there's so many different things, not just relegated to what we discussed. And men, especially black men who uh, disproportionately deal with high blood pressure. When you get on high blood pressure medicine, that affects your erection. Mm. You, you suffer with ED. Okay. Your testosterone levels may drop. And that and stress contributes stress, to that. Stress, cortisol eats up, you know, your testosterone eats up your, your good hormones. And so all those things need to be managed well right. in order to create good context. And again, exercise mm -hmm. is the best way to overcome stressors. And so I encourage every man out there to go and get yourself checked. Mm -hmm. Go talk to your uh, urologist to talk about your testosterone levels. But watch this, lifting weights is a good way to naturally rebuild your testosterone. And it's also, cardio is an excellent way to reduce the cortisol levels in your system so that you're not stressed out. You come out feeling lighter after cardio. So I would encourage you to work out at least three to five times a week to get your heart rate up over 30 minutes. Is there anything else you would say to the women on helping to regulate this distress in their lives? Well, one, identifying what they are and being able to effectively talk to your husband about it. I like what you just said, identifying your stress. Right. Because stress is a silent killer. Mm -hmm. And if the, the more we're self-aware about what stresses us out, the better, right? Absolutely. And so we want to be able to continue to have those dialogues, not just about day to day, but what's going on internally. Hey, babe, you know, I, you know, I'm on medication. I'm feeling a little this way or I'm stressed out because, you know, little Johnny has been doing whatever, can you help me out? And asking for help when needed. I like what you just said. In, in the book, she talks about the hedgehog principle. And she says, you may walk into a room and discover a hedgehog sitting in the chair, uh, symbolically. Okay. And the hedgehog represents a particular emotion that you're feeling at the time. And instead of just throwing the hedgehog at your spouse, like, ah, and the spikes hit him, you got to figure out a way to approach a hedgehog so that it won't injure you. So you might say, I am feeling the hedgehog of, of anger. Mm. What you said to me in the kitchen upset me because it makes me feel like I'm the only one who's responsible for making sure I clean and cook around here. I feel all alone. It made, the statement you made made me feel such a way. Instead of like beginning to get upset and acting out, slamming doors. It's like, let me go tell my spouse this emotion I'm feeling right. and why it is I'm feeling like I'm feeling. Because if you continue to feel those resentment starts to build up and that is something, that's another contextual thing that happens in relationships so great sex can't happen. So you gotta identify your hedgehogs. Right. You gotta identify, name your emotion, mm -hmm. be able to speak to your partner about what it is you're feeling, witness that emotion without becoming emotional. That That is key. 
witnessing without becoming emotional. You have to separate your love for your spouse for what is going on. Mm. And like, okay, he's not intentionally doing this. Maybe he doesn't recognize it. Let me bring it to his attention, but say it in a loving Ooh. manner. You know what? I just heard something in the spirit and it's this. Your spouse is not the lion. No. Mm. You, you, you got to quit reacting as if your partner is the lion, that they're the threat. Right. They're not the threat. It's the fact that you're stressed out, that you got these ex underlying circumstances that make you feel like you're in danger. Mm -hmm. And you've got to be able to witness to what it is that's underlying so, and communicate with your partner so that y'all can resolve it together and get back to a place where right. you're not a danger, that right. you feel safe, right. you feel at home, you feel loved, and that opens the way for great sex. So let's close with this, babe. Tell the, the listeners, what do you think an ideal night of great sex is like for you? What has to be in place for it to be a joyful night? Oh, for a joyful night. Joyful night of sex. What does it look like? Okay, that's just a, a basic joyful night. We don't need all the bells and whistles, but of course, my list has to be very minimal. Um, what list? The, the internal list that I have going on in my head of what needs to be done and okay. when it needs to be done. Okay. So being able to share that with you, you taking some of those things off of my list or even better yet, working with me, whether it's take uh, emptying the dishwasher, uh, putting away food from dinner, those things speak mm. volume to me. Then also spending a little set up time before we move to the bedroom where we're watching a ball game or I'm with you or you're watching something silly that I'm watching for a minute. Then, you know, we move on to the shower we, or take a bath together, um, mm. put some lotion on together, play some, some music together. I like to watch your TikToks because my For You page is nothing <laughs> but uh, DIY and cooking recipes where well, yours has all the funny stuff on it. Oh, watching some of those things for a couple minutes and it just kind of casually helps move into that wind down, you know, cuddle time mm -hmm. where we're making love, falling asleep in each other's arms. I love it. I love it. And I want to give you more of that. And because she is exhausted from taking care of the puppy, I am going to end our time together so she can go get some rest. But we're hoping that just this little time that we spent with you uh, has helped you to identify what is the context for great sex. As a matter of fact, can you put in the comments, what will it take for you to create a better context for your relationship? I'm, I'm curious. We want to, re we're going to reread your comments. And so we want you to put in the comments real quick, what context will help create a better environment for you to have the sex you've always wanted with your spouse? Uh, what does it take? What does it take for you? Uh, what does context, what is a great context for you? Put that in the comments because we wanna hear from you. And if you want us to respond to some questions you might have, uh, do that anonymously or no, not anonymously, but do that in private uh, by emailing us at drstacylspencer at gmail.com, drstacylspencer at gmail.com. <clears throat> we'll be glad to help work you through some of those contacts. And it, also, if you need some extra help coaching from Rhonda and I, uh, we would love for you to be a part of our Eden Circle, theedencircle.com. It is a continuity program where we do deeper dives into mentorship, uh, we have monthly master classes and quarterly meetups, and it is a wonderful community because if you're going to take your marriage mm -hmm. to the next level, you need a coach and you need community. You need other couples who are trying to take their sex life, their love life, their relationship to a whole other level. So we appreciate you guys, and we look forward to seeing you. Listen, if this podcast has been a blessing to you, would you do us a favor? Share this with your couple friends, right? Share it on your page. Share it on your Facebook page, on your YouTube channel, on your YouTube page. Share, share, share. And please subscribe. Like and subscribe and share. We appreciate you guys praying for you. And we look forward to seeing you next time.